Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to I Created a Life I Love. Woohoo! We are on um, podcast number 10. Um, our topic today, our title, we're talking about being brave. Our theme for the month of April is bravery. And today we're talking about starting over with courage. Um, being brave when you are reinventing yourself, reinventing your life, um, or having to start over from any any possible thing that could happen. So that's what we're talking about today. I'm excited. It's going to be good. And um, let's get started. Um, let's go with what's up, Jeanette. What's up? So I've been exploring the area a lot. I actually went to the Valley of Fire with my husband. We went on a hike. And let me tell you, this place is amazingly gorgeous. It's like an hour outside of Vegas. So it's a bunch of different rock formations, different trails, a bunch, and um, it's, I believe it's a state park. And so there's just so many things to explore. It's just amazingly gorgeous. It's really That's cool. so cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm yeah. glad your husband went with you. Because yeah. I know you're doing some hikes on, on your own and stuff, which is always fun. I yeah, love hiking yeah. on my own. But it's fun to share it with someone as well. So that's very uh -huh. cool. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It, we had a good time. We had a good time. How? So what's up with you? I am... You know, it's like the calm before the storm, right? Because I'm feeling the best I felt, right, in a long time. And my next surgery, hopefully, we're saying, and my last surgery um, is in six days. So, of course, mm -hmm. like, I'm feeling my best, right? I'm fully recovered from the second surgery. I'm feeling, you know, well, I shouldn't say fully recovered, but I'm definitely so much stronger, starting to feel closer to my old self. And then back under the knife she goes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're you're feeling a lot better. That's amazing. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's what my doctor said. You know, yeah, yeah, it's like heal you up to cut you again. <laughs> Great <laughs> strategy. I love it. Yeah. But it, um, but it's all good um, all along this journey. So it's fine. But yeah, it's like I have very, very mixed emotions, right? I'm excited because we hopefully think this will be the last surgery. But yet I don't want to get my toes too, you know, you don't want to, again, that whole trying to not judge what we were talking about last month, not judging anything as good or bad and just trying to stay objective and neutral and whatever comes my way, I'm going to learn from and grow from. And so, but yeah, you definitely, you know, have a range of emotions of like getting excited because, you know, this will hopefully be the last of it and getting to a place of being, you know, done with the surgeries and cancer free completely and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, it's, it, it, it can start to play with you a little bit mentally. So it's, it's this journey and talking to you guys has definitely helped in me, um, really being aware, staying in the moment grateful for where I'm at and just trying to find all the learning and growth I possibly can. So yeah, so six days. So we, there you go. All right. So what are we going to be talking about today, Christine? Well, today on our list last week, like we were talking about, right, facing our fears, right. And kind of mm -hmm. looking at, you know, when you need to face your fears, what fears are just fears that <laughs> like we don't really have to overcome and conquer, but the fears that are actually holding us back from things that we want to do and things that will bring us joy, find a way to conquer them or become at peace with. And so this week we're looking more with the area of bravery on reinvention and having courage, I think, um, when you are starting over reinventing. And I think it's perfect because both of us are in that place right now, right? You are completely starting over in a new city, um, in a new house, new area, you know, with just your husband, don't know anyone in Las Vegas, you know what I mean? And you're, you know, all your friends and family are states away now. And so how you're doing that and how you have courage to go out and start meeting people and putting yourself out there. And I'm also have just gone through a reinvention. So I'll, I guess I'll tell part of my story real quick is that so three years ago, I sold um, my child, my children's like their 
um, their home that they grew up in. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, we had lived there for 20 years. And so that was part of the final, um, aspect of the divorce. We had been divorced, but like that was, um, I was able to secure that we would keep the house, um, until my youngest child graduated, which was only a couple of years, but had graduated from high school so they could, you know, stay with their friends, stay in the same area, graduate, you know, finish at the school they started. So we were able to do that. And so we sold that house about three and a half years ago. And then I had to completely figure out what I was going to do on my own. And I mean, I still had them like they were, I, not that I didn't have my children, but I still had them with me. Like my youngest was, you know, still coming home between college. She was just going to be, you know, heading off to college during the year, but, you know, still on breaks and coming home for Christmas. Some, um, both my girls were still coming home for all of that. And my youngest was definitely still coming home over the summer. And so it was just completely figuring out in California how I was going to be able to afford if I was going to do that and afford to be able to buy a new house on my own from my <laughs> part of the sales of our old house. And that was a huge financial, um, just not burden, but challenge, I guess I would say to figure out. And I hadn't ever purchased property on my own. So that was also, and there might be a lot of people out there and women out there that have like, Oh, I've, purchase, you know, or I invest in property or I'm a real estate agent and I've, you know, um, and they're very comfortable with that. For me, I was not. And so it wasn't that I was fearful of it. I was excited about it actually, but it definitely brought stress, right. And a complete, mm -hmm. you know, reinventing myself as far as like, okay, it's like all these forms I'm filling out, all the documents I'm reading, all the financing and the people I'm talking to about financing and all of that, like I'm doing it completely and totally on my own. Um, and so it was challenging. It was extremely challenging to do that. And mm -hmm. I had a lot of people saying to me, oh, don't do it. Don't buy property on your own. Just rent something until you figure it out. And I was like, the rule about California, the secret rule has always been about California is once you own property, you better keep open, owning property or you'll never own property again. And like, once you leave California, you'll never be able to come back and buy again because it's just so expensive. <laughs> it's ridiculous, yeah, yeah. right? I would say now the prices I'm seeing in so many other states are just as bad, yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. So you would know and be able to speak to that even in Vegas. But I think it's just bad everywhere. But California has always been known for being bad. Um, and so I was like, there's no way. I just feel like if I don't take this chunk of money that I'm getting and reinvest it in a house to see growth with that money, I don't think it's a good idea. Like, you know what I mean? It was just a choice I made. I'm sure there's tons of people out there who will be saying, you know, don't do this or do do that. But that's what I wanted to do. And so um, I did find a property. I did find a place to live that I wanted to do, but it was definitely a challenge. And I had to be very brave and I had to find courage and I had to do a lot of research on all of the fees and the documents and all of that in buying a home and making sure that, you know, if where I could talk them down and where I could negotiate. And uh, there's just there's a lot. Everyone who's been through selling of a house and buying of a house. Um, and I also had to completely redo my old property and get it ready to sell as well and stage it and all of that kind of stuff and do some improvements that needed to happen before it could be sold. So there was just a lot involved with the whole thing. And um, so that was a big challenge for me and definitely a time in my life when I had to be courageous and brave in reinventing, you know, it, all aspects of myself and where I was going to be living and being a homeowner, a single homeowner. And, um, I'll tell you one of the things that I did do when my girlfriend was like, watch some movies with brave women. It'll help you like get books <laughs> around you to do it. Watch some movies. So I ended up watching some really cool old movies that had these women just, you know, going off on their own and doing their own thing. And then I even watched, um, the movie brave, right? With the, <laughs> the um, Disney movie, right? That movie. Do you remember that yeah. one? Gorgeous, like red hair. And so I even watched that, but like, I just got myself and the books I was reading and what I was listening to as podcasts or music or any of that, I was, that was showing really strong, brave women. And I think that really helped. I think when you can see other people doing it and you see other people 
you know, doing things when you never thought you would be single, you never thought you'd be doing it all on your own. And okay, you're accepting that that's now where you are. And I was very accepting of that, but it still doesn't mean you don't have your moments of doubt. It still doesn't mean you don't have your moments of, can I do this? Oh God, am I going to fuck it up? Am I going to lose an extra $5,000 here or $10,000 here? Cause I make the wrong choice, right? Like yeah. you have all those questions and doubts. And it's hard when you don't have someone to bounce it off of, right. Or, and, um, a partner that's in it with you and, um, has your best interest at heart and you're doing it on your own. So, um, that was my secret way. I tried to find as much inspiration and courageous people around me that, um, could give me the strength to, you know, do what I was doing. How about you reinventing in Vegas? I know you have so many things that you're doing for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And so currently I am in the process of rediscovering and not only, uh, re well, reinventing, but I'm rediscovering myself and really, you know, what are my strengths and weaknesses, you know, and not forgetting what I accomplish. Um, I just also just started, you know, trying to beef up my resume and I'm like, damn, I accomplished a lot and I've done a lot and it's always difficult to remember and remind yourself, you know, what you have achieved. And I I think I'm in the process of right now, not setting, you know, selling myself short, if you want to say that, you know, um, But then also keeping in mind the reasons why I left California and the reasons why I I left my job setting is because I was completely stressed out. You know, do I want that stress? Do I want that um, to continue? So just really trying to find what interests me and um, to build on that. You know, I I probably will pursue another job in education some way, some sort, of supporting students um, because, you know, I really do enjoy working with students, but it might be in a different capacity. So right now I am rediscovering all of my likes and, you know, and what are my strengths and my weaknesses and um, really putting myself out there. So I haven't quite done it yet, you know, um, but I I will (laughs) starting this month. Last night, yeah, I had an epiphany. I was like, oh my God, wow, I can do a lot of things if I really wanted to. (laughs) So I'm making lists and I'm, you know, trying to come up with multiple letters of interest and (laughs) resumes to apply to different positions. So we'll see how it goes. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the really important things. I think that's a great piece of advice. So, um, is writing out lists and writing out things that you have accomplished or things that you are good at. Because whenever you're in huge change, going through huge changes in your life, you can start to feel overwhelmed and you can start to feel a little lost. Mm -hmm. Um, Making sure and having a list as far as what you're good at, what you like to do, times that you have been brave, things that you have accomplished is important to be able to look at. I've started um, with, you know, the dry erase markers. I've started, you know, putting them on my mirrors. So I have like little writings or little sayings and I change it up all the time that are on my mirrors in my house. So I have one in my bedroom on my mirror that I look out, look at like every morning when I'm putting on um, lotions and stuff and getting up in the morning or, you know, putting up my hair or whatever. And I look at it in the evening. I see, you know, a little, you know, whatever little saying or whatever my focus is. And um, so knowing that we're talking this month um, about bravery, I've been trying to have some quotes about bravery um, up there. Um, and it's been it's been good because I, I do think it, it can be a lot. It, it's just a lot to try and go through major changes. And I think you need to have strong people around you that are going to be positive. I think for, I'm a very, and again, I think this goes back to being a Gen Xer Uh, I think I've talked to a lot of other women who are in their fifties, um, Gen X, that we tend to do things a lot on our own. We tend to be loners. We tend to have a lot of friends and people that we know, but 
a lot of the time we'll handle things on our own without turning to anybody else because that's how we were raised, right? Like we were not ever raised to come to our parents and talk to them and share our feelings. There was this great Instagram or TikTok post where they were put, they put all the generations and one was just like, you should talk about your feeling. And one's like, I'm in therapy for feeling. And one's, you know, millennial, one's Gen Z and all saying this. And then the bottom one just says, you guys have feelings and it's the Gen Xer because it's like, <laughs> you just were never allowed feelings. If you were upset, if you were scared, if you were whatever, we were told to get over it, right? It, the, your feelings were not in any way um, <laughs> listened to, let alone even acknowledged. Like mm-hmm. it was just, you no, know, shut up and go play outside. The adults are talking now. Like that's just what it was. So you, we didn't grow up with, you know, being able to say I'm scared or I'm this, or I'm there to our parents. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. remember my mother, honestly, ever like really sitting down and listening to my concerns or fears over anything happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it just wasn't the time. They just didn't for better or for worse. So I think that that made me extremely independent. And so as I was saying, when I was buying my house, when I was going through my divorce and all of that, I kept a lot of what I was going through very secret, you know, very secret. And I didn't, you know, talk on or lean on a lot of other people because I was like, okay, pick myself up. I can do this. I'm strong. I'm brave. I don't need anybody type of attitude. And Mm -hmm. I think the goal that we want to get to, hopefully as we get older, if you can, is that that's not the way it has to be. And I think we all raised our kids very different from that. Right. And we raised Mm -hmm. our kids to think about their feelings and express them when they're scared and when they are going through big change and they need to be brave and they're trying to find their courage to talk about it, to get support. And so I think that's what I'm trying to do more of. I think I'm trying to reach out to more people when I go through changes. And I think this podcast is one way of doing that, of making and building a community uh, so we can really support each other and we can be there for each other and we can be the inspiration about, you know, and remind us that we are brave, that we are courageous just for getting up in the morning and going through it, right? (laughs) Getting up and taking a new step every day. And, you know, my, my generation is different and it was a norm to talk about that, those things, you know, and to have that social presence. And, and I mean, I think it's also culturally too. And it depends, you know, the culture that you're brought up with, because I know there are some cultures where they still don't talk about their feelings with their parents, you know, and uh, but as far as with uh, friends, you know, I think I'm really grateful to have a good support system of who I, you know, who I trust and who I can, you know, um, bounce ideas off of and, you know maybe sometimes go to advice or get advice or even just to have somebody to listen because it is difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're going through parts too of just when it's, you know, when you're doing this of being lonely because you can't just go get a beer with one of your friends or can't, have you been doing zooms with friends and stuff or. Well, I know it's, it's, it's more like I'm using my husband. (laughs) But no, n- not Zooms. It's more phone calls, you know, um, text or even just sending each other memes. <laughs> yeah. You guys don't yeah. get on the phone usually. It's usually texting or memes, right? Yeah. Memes of how you're feeling or if you miss somebody and it's like, it, you know, kind of conveying the message of like, oh, this is how you feel when you, you miss your best friend or, you know, X, Y, and Z or just yeah. little um, side jokes that we do. So. Yeah, definitely do that. Um, yeah, yeah. And they'll call me from their break. <laughs> right. When they're okay. on their break, they're like, hey, what are you doing? Or, yeah, so it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to um, get more because I was, okay, so like another factor, I was going to start like, and something for me to be brave about and courageous about is getting back into a relationship. I think that's going to be a very hard one for me. I know I shouldn't say, I think I know that's a very hard <laughs> one for me 
I already know it's already here. <laughs> it's right here. It's already happening. Um, is a hard one for me. Um, but and I was going to start being brave and go on that journey privately um, right when I got diagnosed with cancer. So, you know, as I said, the universe said, hold my beer. You're going to stay single for quite a bit longer yet because we're going to send you on a little detour. So I think that that's going to be, I've decided that I think that's going to be, you know, the journey that I'm going to start on hopefully maybe this summer. Right. Mm-hmm. So I know once I'm and see, I'm, I'm already going to start shaking about it. I just, I think that whole, the whole idea of, um, relationship the, yeah, we're going to have some fun talks about that. I'm sure I'm going to get tons of advice because, uh, that's where I'm going to tell you right now, like that sends, I, I will jump off of anything, any building, any plane before going on a blind date, before going on a date. I think it's that scary. <laughs> it is, it is so ridiculously scary to me, to that whole factor. So, um, But anyway, we'll get there. That'll be a fun little journey. Everyone can go on and at my expense, make many jokes. I'm sure that'll be coming up. But so that's something that I think I have to face as well and be brave about and and find my courage to do. But I have given myself and said that, you know, I I get to heal and physically and make sure my mental state is right and strong um, with myself and my body at it having changed um, as much as it has with all of these surgeries and the scars and all of that, that, you know, that I can wait until I, I get past this next, you know, get through it, um, to try and, you know, go into that world. But yeah, it's, there's so many things to be that I feel like every corner is a, and I'm not a scared person, but I do feel like every corner is just, okay. What do we got? What do we got to be brave about now? What do I need to face now? What do I need to be courageous about now? I think there was a meme too, talking about memes, but I think there was one out there where someone was saying, okay, Lord, don't give me, I I cannot learn anything more today. No more lessons today. (laughs) No more challenges today. I need the evening off. I need the afternoon off. Like I'm going into my house, shutting the door and like nothing more to happen. And I do feel that way right now, kind of in my life. And I bet you, you, you do too, that every time I turn around, it's either a work challenge, which I'm not going to go into really details on that right now, but there's a couple, I work a couple different jobs. I'm consulting and still working in the education field. And, uh, there's been a couple of things that have happened that have been extremely challenging and I'm having to face and be courageous about and possibly start over in. And then I think with, you know, with the cancer and the surgeries, I think that's been another one. And then the house, and I just think it's been, there's, it's a lot. It's a lot of things that we have to face and look at. I think everyone's having to find things they're looking at and being confronted with things in their life that are change, where they have to be courageous or brave or face something. And we want to not bring with us all the same old stuff, right? Hopefully exactly. we want to learn and grow. And like you said, reinvent ourselves. And I think that's important to do. And I think you do it a lot in your life. Me being in my fifties, I will tell you, you're in your thirties. I it, there's been a number of times. I think you reinvent yourself when you become a mom, when you be, you know, when you have children, like you, you never think of yourself as how you're going to be as a mom, right. And what it feels like to be a, a mom. And you don't know what that's like until you're in it. And then you become this mom with certain rules and, you know, this is how I'm going to raise my kids. And this is what's important to me. These are the values I'm going to give them. And that's a whole reinvention from, for me, it was from the woman who was, career oriented and out fun with her friends all the time. And then all of a sudden switching to mom, it, it was definitely a change and, and reinvention and being courageous and trying to figure that out. And then once they get old enough and they leave the nest, like, okay, now who am I that I'm not a mom? Like you're still mom, but not in the same way, you know, once they're out. So that's another reinvention that happens as to, okay, who am I now? And then Mm -hmm. if you go through a divorce or anything, again, another reinvention, you move, 
all of yes. these things. Um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's an opportunity to change and to grow and to, you know, um, learn from and become better. But I do think it can be overwhelming and scary. Yeah. For all the brave ladies out there, <laughs> you guys are killing it. And keep killing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So our recommendation, what we're doing, I don't know. I don't know if you want to take advice from us or not, but we're in the midst of it. We're in the midst of reinvention and being courageous um, as best we can. And I think uh, I would say one of my best recommendations is to definitely surround yourself with stories and movies and, you know, books or whatever, music um, from people who are out there killing it and being brave, right. And facing fears and being courageous, which brings me to kind of our monthly resource, um, which is it's from Brene Brown, B R E N E Brown, Brene Brown. And she did a speech called the man in the arena and, or step into the arena. I've seen it called both on YouTube. So you can listen to either one, but basically it's taking from a speech that was given by Roosevelt, um, Theodore Roosevelt, right. Um, about being the man. And of course the man in the arena, but being the person in the arena, right. <laughs> and, um, that, that, that's, that there are going to be tons of people around you who are going to critique what you're doing. Their speech is about that the brave people are the ones who actually step into the arena. The brave people are the ones that actually put themselves out there. So you are either creating something, building something, reinventing yourself in some way, trying new things, whatever you're doing in your being brave and courageous, don't take critiques from people who are sitting in the stands and watching you do it right? Because they're not in the arena. The only thing that should matter is like maybe take it, you know, inspiration from other people out there who are in the arena as well and putting themselves out there to try and better their lives and create something. So um, her big advice was that she was really criticized for the first speech that she gave about vulnerability and when she first became famous and the attacks on her, the comment sections um, were vicious. And so she really listened to Roosevelt's speech and this idea that she walked away was if you're not in the arena as well, if you're not creating your own stuff, if you're not out there being brave and failing and trying new things and trying reinvention and trying to make yourself better and learning and creating, then she's not interested in your comments. And I fully agree with her on that. Um, I think that you need to align yourself and find other people being brave and mm -hmm. trust me, they're not going to critique you <laughs> because they know what it feels like to be that vulnerable and put yourself out there and they're going to support you. And those are the people that you want around you and everybody else you just have to ignore. And I love, I love that idea to just ignore people critiquing from the stands. That's, that's not going to help and surround yourself with other people who are out there being brave. Um, and know how it feels to be vulnerable as you're doing it. Yep. It's just noise. Just it's a just bunch noise. of noise. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen to her talk on YouTube, right? The Brene Brown um, Man in the Arena speech and talk, or you can listen to read. I think you can read um, Roosevelt's his speech about the um, man in the arena. So all, it's all very interesting and I think inspiring. Um, and parts of that, um, that speech are just so inspiring. I had a couple lines of it written, as I was saying, up on my little mirror with my um, markers, um, dry erase markers. And it's really inspiring as far as the strength of the man um, in the arena um, who is being vulnerable and fighting the fight to be creative. Love it. Our topic for next week is courageous boundary setting. I have so much work to be doing on boundary setting. I'm learning and I have some ideas, but I think again, I can't wait to hear from my, our Gen Xers. Cause I think that is something that was hugely missing as far as boundaries. When in my generation is Gen X that the word boundaries was never 
used. So I think that'll be very interesting. So what's your moment of joy this week, Jeanette? So as I was speaking about earlier, it's a picture of from the Valley of Fire. It is a scenery photo. And what's crazy is the weather in the desert, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know, is just so intense. Like it could be sunny and bright one moment, and then all of a sudden a storm can come. So um, it is a picture of a bunch of rock formations, and it is also a picture that includes the sky in a huge storm is coming. And so when my husband and I were hiking, we were actually starting to feel the rain and we're like, oh no, we need to get out of here quickly (laughs) because that does not look good. (laughs) And so um, we zoomed to our car as fast as we could and then it just started pouring. And it was like intense rain pour with extreme wind and it was just insane so it was kind of cool to experience but a little scary (laughs) but it's like beautiful it's it's you know the calm before the storm I guess if you want to say yeah that's so cool Mm -hmm. I love that well mine I won't um share the picture but I'm going to give you guys thoughts because I do want to like keep it a little private but it was buying my own house when I signed the dotted line and I was handed the keys I guess I would say at that moment when I was handed the keys and said, this is your house, I literally, um, you know, went into the house on my own and, you know, opened up the doors and just stood in the main like living room area and just kind of looked around. It was just like, all right, like we did this, we're on our way. And it was just such a feeling of accomplishment for me buying the house, being able to afford it on my own um, and, you know, getting through all the drama that happened, the ups and downs. And, you know, the market, as you know, at that time was extremely well, it still is competitive and people were outbidding and overbidding each other and houses were flying off. And it was, you know, and everything that went with my old house um, and what we had to do with that to get it sold. So there was just a lot of ups and downs and Mm -hmm. um, circumstances that I had to navigate all on my own. And with, you know, um, I, it was, it was just such a great moment and feeling when I was handed the keys and said, you're done. This is it. This is yours. And so it was an amazing feeling. So I'll see if I can find that um, picture that I could put up on our website and in here, that's not, it doesn't really give away where my like anything too personal, but yeah. So that, that was my moment of joy in remembering that I did that. And, um, it was a great feeling, really, really good feeling. Um, let's see. Oh, we did put up a new, um, Monday minute yesterday. Um, so, um, go, please go on that to the shorts on YouTube, um, on our YouTube channel. I created a life I love and click, um, not under podcasts, but under shorts. And we have our minute where you can just take a minute and meditate. Um, just take, do some breathing, just a calming moment and listen to the wind outside or the crashing of the waves outside. And, um, you know, just kind of bring everything back to your intention for the day and um, the joy that you would like to get out of the day. So um, that is up. So I'm excited about that. Can't wait. All right, everybody have a wonderful week. Go out there and create a life you love. Bye. Bye.